Hey, Jensen. Hey, Crenshaw. City car yet? Did I sell my car, he asks. I got brand new tires. I got the wheel alignment. I got new shocks. I am buying that car. I'm not selling it. Captain. Captain, I've got a situation here. Coming up on pad three, sir. It's got to be a short, sir. It's got to be. If we were attacking the Russians, we'd be on the 24-hour alert clock. Shut the hell up, sir. Oh, I'm just saying, we sir. We got a bird out there that's going to take off in 60 seconds. Where the hell is the code book, Crenshaw? Smitty, aren't you supposed to count it down? All right, let's get on correct procedure here. Now, this is Captain five, Riley at Twin Palms. Give me General Stocker. 58. Sir, now. Sir. Minus 57. 57. Sir, do you want me to check the computer feed? 57. Junction box is cooking. This couldn't be a full scale. No, it's just been sir. You're checking these tunnels. Yes, sir. General Stocker. 40. 40. 40. 40. 40. 40. 40. 40. 40. 40. 40. 40. 40. 40. 40. 40. 40. 40. 40. 40. 40. 40. 40. 40. 40. 40. 40. 40. 40. 40. 40. 40. 40. 40. 40. 40. 40. 40. 40. 40. 40. 40. 40. 40. 40. 40. 40. 40. 40. 40. 40. 40. 40. T-minus 34 and counting. Well, hit the overload. Now! 30. Hit the overload. Dead. we we'll hit it again. Nothing, sir. It's gonna go in 16. Scramble sack. We've got a wild missile set to fire in 13 seconds out of Nevada. 1660 code red, set intercept. I don't want that bird to get into Russian airspace. You got that? It's going to go up in 13 seconds. 11, 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5. All clear. Condition red is over. Repeat. All clear. Condition red is over. It shut down, sir. It, it just shut down. What's going on, sir? I thought the computers were fail-safe. Riley, I'll get back. I told them that system stunk. I told them not to go for this. We're locked in! 24 hours, that damn thing is gonna fire a full complement of missiles at the USSR. I can shut down one. How do I stop this? 24 hours, we start World War III. No way to stop it. Look, honey, come down here on Friday. You spend the weekend with me. Then you fly back up to San Francisco on Monday. I don't know how I can make it, Ralph. We're doing interrogatives all through the weekend. How long is this case going to last, Pam? I hate having you up there. I cannot afford a commuter romance. Well, try and make it down if you can, all right? You know I will, babe. Bye. Bye. Yeah. You owe 50 cents on your long distance call to Palmdale. I wasn't speaking to Palmdale, operator. I was calling San Francisco. 50 cents, please. I was talking to San Francisco, operator. If you don't pay, we'll bill the other party. You guys got a terrific system there. Hi there, you're on the air with Elmer Dills. Elmer, uh... I wanted to tell you about a favorite place of ours, uh, the Burrito Brothers over on Slauson. Hey, yeah, I know it. It's on Slauson near La Cienega. The last time I went there, the service was a little bit slow. The ordinary was, well, a little bit slow. The food ordinary. Hey, frankly, hey, come on. Hardly you smile you the Carlo, Dan. You know, Yo, I would much prefer you a you warm meat in the burrito, not just warmed over bean no. paste and a hot no, sauce. No. 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 Tony, you broadsided me! It's all right, no damage, no damage here. What are you talking about? You ruined my left rear corner panel. Look at you. Man, it's not ruined. That's, you know, that's an improvement. Come on, it's custom by Crash. It looks nice. It looks nice, look. Where did you get this thing? Hey, this ain't a thing. What we have here is the Villa Cana Piranha, the fastest set of wheels this side of L.A. River. Hey, can we get change the radio station and get this guy to stop talking about food? I'm on a diet. Hey, this is built for speed, no frills, all right? That means the radio's broken, right? Stuck on this station. 
You don't happen to have insurance for this thing, do you? Of course not, man. This, this is a lean, mean racing machine, man. And we're in business to make money, not waste it on insurance. What business? You know the guy that lives under the bridge? The guy that lives where? See, this guy, he's got this stripped-down coupe with a flathead blown. He hangs out under the bridge, and he drag races dudes at dawn. Now, if you win, you get his car. But if you lose, he gets yours. But we're gonna take a bite out of his behind with the piranha tomorrow morning. Dig it, and we don't take prisoners. Yeah, Tony's gonna use a piranha to win cars off of guys. And then we're gonna open up a used car lot. Villa Connors used cars, we're gonna call it. That has a nice, clean ring to it. Yeah, no kidding. No offense, Tony, but I think you'd make more money with this if you rented it out as a deep sea anchor. Looks slow, don't it? But under the hood, Marco, if you will. We have your raging trouble. Don't believe it. Relieved, ported, blown. We run this car on jet fuel, man. This car's gonna burn up the pavement. Hey, Tony, can we get this guy to stop talking about omelets on starving already? Yeah, I got it, I got it. Ah, oh, pass it on you, buddy. Hey, come on, Tony, let's go get something to eat. I'm really hungry. This request is for Ralph, from your star admirer. Wonder when things got so bad. Oh, but what happened? All news radio in Palmdale. Coming to you by way of broadcasting from Palmdale. Palmdale? What could possibly be important in Palmdale? Bill, don't you remember the last time we were out in the desert, just before before the spaceship came down and gave us the suit? The radio went on the fritz. Well, the same thing just happened to me, Bill. Now, I'm telling you, I'm getting some kind of a message here. I, I, I'm picking up Palmdale radio stations, which were impossible to get here in Los Angeles. And the song, The Eve of Destruction, was dedicated to Ralph. I can't do anything about it now. I'm gonna catch hell for walking out in the middle of a weekly staff meeting as it is. You got no idea what we're going through around here. Since Carlisle's been put in charge, he's been coming on like Bigfoot's ugly brother. Bill, don't tell me you're still afraid of that spaceship. Come on! Afraid? Me? <laughs> what, of little green guys? Come on, give me a break. Well, listen, pick me up at my house later. I gotta get my car fixed. See ya. Since I took over this section, there's been some grumbling. Okay, as of this second, we are belaying all grumbling. Any agent who doesn't like the new dress code can lump it. The first step in being sharp is looking sharp, and we are going to sparkle. Is that very clear? Hi, Bill. Gee, I'm glad you found the time to get back. Hope it didn't pull you away from anything too pressing. Uh, no, it's just some guys from the CIA need a little update on one of my cases. Please carry on, Mr. Carlisle. That's one gig, Maxwell. Dress code violation. White socks, brown shoes. Well, what's the matter with brown shoes? Two gigs. Oh, I get it. One gig for each sock. No, one for the socks, one for the haircut. Thanks, Carlisle. I am taking this very seriously, and I think it's about time that the rest of you people got the picture fast. It is no longer enough to be efficient. We are going to look efficient. When we walk into a scene, they are going to be able to pick us out of a crowd. You cut my light cruiser. That's another thing. <clears throat> there will be no plane battleship during the staff meetings. You two are on report. Who's got the Ratner case? Um, yeah. Uh, Ratner Charles W., uh, computer expert, missing last three days, missing person report filed by girlfriend Nancy Benson. Apparently, he was forced into a car outside the UCLA Computer Center. Some kind of weird genius. Yes, sir, I'm on it. Of course, you have to file with you. Well, as a matter of fact, I, I do. It's, uh, it's right here, sir. I'll take that. This case is no longer active. 
What do you mean it's no longer active? The guy's still missing. Military intelligence took it off the board this morning. Military intelligence? This guy isn't in the military. Hey. This came down from Washington this morning. Need I say more? Yeah, but I mean, they can't, uh... Yeah. It's not their jurisdiction, it's ours. <clears throat> we have been outranked on this one. Ratner Charles W. is no longer our problem. You want to stand here and argue about this with me, Maxwell? This stinks. I hate this. Be very careful, Billy. You're about to lose more than a light cruiser. Yeah, but what's going on? Don't you care? How's it going, Jensen? Be careful, Captain. I've taken the cowlings off all these junction boxes. How much longer is it going to be? Sir, I'm working as fast as I can. Everything is hot. Please stand back. Please, watch 68 for me. I think that I can disconnect this thing. Okay. Sergeant Jensen is dead. Send down a stretcher. I'm headed for Tunnel 8. Well, you've been out here for a real long time. I guess, uh, it's a no-show for, uh, the little green guys, I guess, uh... We might as well head back for the barn. Bill. Back! Look, I can understand you're being scared of that spaceship, but who wouldn't be? Wait a minute. Who said I was scared? Give me a break. What are you talking about? Oh, I'm not... come on, man. You're scared to death. No, I'm not. I, I'm, what I am is I'm, uh, I'm nailed to the side of my desk by this Carlisle guy who, uh, was trying to make the whole place look like an ad out of Gentleman's Quarterly, giving all our cases over to military intelligence. Let guys get away with murder. Did you see that guy? What guy? Where? Oh, he was dead. Dead? <laughs> That's a pretty quick diagnosis, Doctor. Shouldn't we have a second opinion? Look, so there he is again. Did you see that? Come any closer, you're a dead man. He's already dead, Bill. A missile system called Spoil Sport activated eight hours ago. This system, once turned on, cannot be shut off. In 16 hours, it will launch a complement of 30 missiles at the USSR. Those missiles cannot be disarmed. You must find a way to stop this from happening. You're the only one that can save the world from destruction. If you fail, this planet will simply turn to dust. Uh, wait, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Come back. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Let him go. Ralph, uh, that's it. We got the message, okay? Message received. Let's get out of here. Instruction book. Come on, go! Ralph, come on! 
Hey, come back here! Hey! I need more information! Oh, oh. Where's my instruction book for this suit? Nothing. Uh, there must be some kind of a force field that's... What in the world is Operation Spoil Sport? It's one of those programs that you sort of heard about. And you didn't want to believe it could really exist, but you knew it did anyway. Because it was just crazy enough to be real, in spite of the fact it shouldn't be, but it is. It's what it is. Come on, Bill. <laughs> Would you pull yourself together all right? I mean, we have a big job ahead of us. And if you're going to spend the next 16 hours in a trance, we're not going to be very good to anybody, are we? <laughs> uh, yeah, okay, right. Uh... Operation Spoil Sport was designed to activate all by itself in case the United States lost World War III and there was nobody left over here. About 30 missiles are uh, uh, held back. They're not used in the conflict. They fire the next day by computer. The Russians are still trying to dig out of the rubble. Our last 30 nukes come sailing over, catch them by surprise, wipe them out, win World War III for the good old U.S. of A. That's Operation Spoil Sport. You sure picked an appropriate name for it. Nifty, huh? What kind of a sick mind could think of something like that, Bill? After a nuclear war, what's there left to win? The whole planet is a radioactive ball of mush. Kind of goes against the old American tradition of fair play, doesn't it? It was built in the 50s. Sick. Everybody was running around crazy, scared to death. The Cold War was real popular. Why do you guys give us this junk? We don't know where the computer is. We don't know how to shut it off. We don't know who in the military is working on this problem. How are we going to stop this, Bill? Ralph, cool. Will you just calm cool. down? We got to think. In 16 hours, 16 hours, Bill, you count it. 30 nuclear missiles are going to fire. 16 hours. OK, we got to go to my house. We'll have a skull session. We will work out our um, scenario our plan. Much as it pains me to bring this up, Ralph, you're going to have to fly me out of here the old fashioned way. Come on, Bill. You know what happened the last time we tried yeah, that? Yeah, but the time before well, that, you were really starting to cook. Come on now. Uh, Bill, we I don't know. We are not going to let this country fire the first missiles and start a war. It goes against traditional and honor and all that stuff, and in spite of that, I don't like it. Now, turn around and let's get going. What are you supposed to do with a car? Just leave it here? Hey, I'll send somebody back. <laughs> you got it! You got it! I think we did lost better that time. Oh, this isn't working, Bill. <coughs> this could take all night. It's still too far to walk. Oh. Hey, come on, let's go. <coughs> oh. oh, thank you. Yeah, thank you. Uh, try to crash on my other hip next time. You are a disaster, a genuine card-carrying disaster. Yeah, this coming from feet do your duty Maxwell, who's cowering in the car, afraid of green guys. I am not. You are too. Oh, hold it, sir. Sir, hello. Please. 
please, uh, will you give us a lift, please? Our car's broken down. This is the Federal uh, Bureau of Investigation business right here. Don't you say it. Chicken fat. I want a race of what? Thunder, let's do it. Yeah, let's, let's do, do it. it. All right, T. Yeah. yeah. Okay, now, don't forget to get your tickets early because uh, every uh, night's been a sellout so far. Circus of the Stars, remember. Uh, my friend does all the high wire work. <laughs> Have a nice day. What the heck is going on? Looks like the third wheel of the rebel without a cause. Tony must be drag racing, the guy who lives under the bridge. The guy who lives under the what? What are they doing racing on my block? My neighbors are going to get together and kill me. Ralph, in 12 hours, if you want to get your neighbors together, you're going to have to use a vacuum cleaner. Ron's babysitting Kevin. I bet you, Tony brought this circus over so she could watch him win. OK. Yeah, well, you get inside, get some clothes on, and I'll come here a set of wheels. Ralph, disappear. Oh. Calm down. here, Harry. I, I don't want to see you lose this. It's too pretty. Yeah, what happened, T? Oh, hey. Oh, uh, this H, this is, uh, this, this is a benefit race. Aren't you supposed to be with Kevin, Rhonda? Right. I'll call you as soon as I can. Okay. All right, that's it. Give me the other guy's pink slip. But, sir, that, that's my car. I just blew it off the road, sir. Give me the pink slip. Ralph, you drive. This piece of junk will get us as far as the office will pick up a proper set of wheels. Villacana, out. Yeah, but you said, uh, get out. Take a hike. Come on, Tom. Come on, we'll get it. What are we going by the office for? It's a new wrinkle in the scenario. I'll brief you on the way. Gentlemen, gentlemen, we're in a yellow alert and going into red. Air Force One is in the air. We don't have a choice. We've got to notify the Soviet Union. It's a risk, but we need their help. OK, then why don't we just give them a ring? Tell them a nuclear strike is headed their way. Sack is up. Now, if we can get the Russian planes in the air, maybe we can shoot the missiles down. Maybe. Maybe if we had some idea where those missiles are coming from. That was the whole point when they set the system up. It's a computer feed, and the system scans for any missile left over after a final strike. But our silos are full, gentlemen. And that computer is going to pick those missiles at random. You have to have a recommendation to the president, General. You want a recommendation? We can't shut that system down. Fire a full-strength preemptive attack. That's war! You're talking about starting World War III, for God's sake! No, Admiral, I'm talking about finishing World War III. It started 10 years ago, and we're losing. Cuba, Hungary, Afghanistan, Poland. 
We send over a handful of missiles with our apologies. You think they're going to bill us for damages? They're going to counter with everything they've got? We've lost every advantage of a surprise attack. You've got to hit first and hit big. Lose. Isn't there a way to shut Spoil Sports' system down? I'm trying everything I can think of. Try setting it off and drive. So that's the plan? I mean, just because military intelligence takes a particular case away from you, what does that prove? Ratner Charles W. is a computer expert who gets kidnapped at the same time that a computer is going haywire and military intelligence snaps the case away from us? You tell me. OK, it's a hunch. It's the only one I got. Well, Bill, assuming that you're right, and you go punch Ratner's name in on the computer up there, what's that going to do? Well, to ask our computer a question, I got to punch in my own name and my clearance. All computers are connected. So someplace in military intelligence, there's a computer screen going to know I'm poking around. I promise you, within an hour, I'll be sitting in my living room, nice, there'll be a knock on the door. Right. And voila, they grab you and they take you to the guy who's in charge of trying to deprogram Spoil Sport. We're working from the inside. Yeah, if it works, it'll save us a whole lot of bull. I don't know what else to do. We gotta get on the inside. We gotta find that Spoil Sport computer. Bill, I look a little bit conspicuous sitting out here. What do I do if a cop drives by? Uh, ask him if he wants to race you for pink slips. Always time for levity. Okay, Arnold. This one is for the house and the car and whatever is behind door number three. Purple, huh? Oh, I didn't know we had a purple coat. Special request lines are open. This one goes out to Ralph from a friend. KPTZ and the hits just keep coming. When Captain, we have a C1 security breach here. Isolate and contain. Priority Alpha. is right here. What's going on? What's happening? What's happening? Hey! Well, I gotta tell you guys, I hate fraternity initiations.
Shatner, uh, 1616 Spring Street. It's cute, but it needs a hat. <laughs> break, all right. I didn't mean to do that. I didn't mean to do that. Look, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. I know this looks kind of silly. I, no! I, know I look kind of silly, all right? But I'm gonna ask you to bear with me for a minute because I need your help, Nancy. Yes, uh, of I need your help. You do. Uh, look, uh, maybe you should just go uh, uh, down. Now listen, what I'm gonna ask you is gonna sound kind of crazy, all right? No. no. It's gonna no, sound crazy, no, but... No, no, it won't. It won't. Because uh, I don't believe in crazy, and uh, anything you want to do is fine with me. I want me. you to listen to me. Oh, no, please, no, listen to me. Please. please. Now, I'm working in conjunction with the FBI on a top-secret mission for the U.S. government. The FBI? Yes, the FBI. I like the FBI. Good. No. I really, truly do. I, I'm not a radical or anything, and if you say you're with the FBI, well, that's enough for me. Listen, don't humor me, all right? I'm telling you the truth. The truth is a very important thing. And I know you're telling me the truth because you look very truthful. I look ridiculous, all right? Now, come on, hang in with me, okay? I'm not going to hurt you, Nancy. I promise. I promise. Now, listen, I need some of Charles Ratner's clothes. I understand that he used to live here. Okay, they're over there. In the closet? It's a good place. You can take anything you want. You can even have my dresses. When I touch something, I get vibes from the people that have worn the item. Oh? You wear clothes beautifully. Did he wear a hat? Hats usually give me my best mental impulses from hats. Nothing. How long ago did he wear this hat? He, he never wore it. That's mine. But feel free to keep it, though. It looks terrific on you, and it goes with everything. I can't dig in. I can feel myself slipping. Everybody treats me like some kind of a bug. I don't know, maybe I'm being selfish. But nobody else knows what it feels like. I mean, when they gave me this suit, nobody told me anything about saving the world. How do I do that? I'm sure you'll think of something. What if I don't? What if I don't? What if I don't? I mean, I should just take my kid and I should, I should fly away some. Just fly away. I don't even know how to fly very well. How am I going to stop World War III, huh? I'll make some coffee. It's decaffeinated. You'll like that. And then we can talk about this, and we'll work out this problem of yours. Wait a minute, I'm getting something. It's coming from the computer. Oh, that's nice. to let me defuse this. It's too late. Twin Palms. I've got to get to Twin Palms military base. Can I get you a cab? Do you mind if I take a rain check on the coffee? No. That's fine. Okay. I'm sorry about the door.
police, sir. You've got to hold on for a second and listen to me. Uh, this whole thing was a setup, a scam, a, a put on, uh, just to get me inside to meet one of the top brass. Uh, I had no idea it was going to be Jerry himself. I served under you in Korea, sir. Uh, you, you can't do this. Please. You oh, no. Be about a minute. Do agents in your bureau make it a habit of disobeying orders, fella? You didn't learn that under my command. The Ratner case was off limits. It was the only way I could figure to get to you or to whoever was in charge here. I got a way to stop these missiles firing. So do I. Huh? You do? Of course. The main computer's right here. Charles Ratner is here. I kidnapped him. I used him to transfer control of the spoil sports system to this bunker. You don't get it, do you? <clears throat> I'm pushing the buttons. I'm the one who started all this. Why? What for? Well, just measure the square miles the Russians have put on their map since World War II. Measure the square mile since Korea. Little by little, we're getting taken over, Maxwell. Hell's bell, soldier. You've got to know. The only way to stop him is to finish him off. You don't reason with a cancer cell. You excise it. Yeah, but, uh, no. Now, it's not as bad as everybody thinks. I think the Russians will fold. We'll let them have everything, and they'll fold. You watch. The American spirit can win this. I believe that, soldier. I really do. You're bananas. You're nuts. You're off the trolley. You slipped a tr track. You're cool. Mom, you're crazy. Oh, no. I'm going. Oh, God. Um... Mom. All right, Maxwell. Now, who else knows about Operation Spoil Sport? My p partner, uh, Ralph. Ralph. Uh, only one that can stop him. How can he stop the missiles? This uh, suit is mad magic. <laughs> Fly around in the sky. Al, you? Come on, Ralph. Well, again. Splat. <laughs> what the hell is he talking about? <laughs> Maxwell. Mm. Maxwell. Mm -hmm. How did you find out about Spoil Sport? Uh, it's uh, T H E M. M. Uh, it's a uh, little <laughs> green guy. It's a dead guy. Told us about it. How much did you bump into this guy? Less than half a cc. I don't get it. Couldn't be faking it, could he? No way. He called me nuts. I think oh. he's in line for a padded cell. Oh, say can see by the dawn's early light. This is a hard lyric. I got some music, though. Intruder in the north perimeter. Bring him in. Three minutes and two seconds. Oh, 
God. Bill, oh, what'd they do to you? Bill. Hey, hey, hey. All right, where you been? I knew you'd get here eventually. Come on, man. Oh. We gotta go. No, not me. No more Palmdale. No more little green guys. No spaceships. <laughs> Bill, we don't have much time. <laughs> Listen, I'll be back. I'll be here. Oh, oh, so beautiful, but see, now you see him now, you don't. Hiya, fellas. I hate to tell you, but he's right behind you. <laughs> as fast as the floor. Boy, I haven't felt this good since Korea. Ever tell you, I caught one in the lung, they had to give me a shot. The guy was a vet. It was a big, it was great. That's about a month. Oh, say, can you see? But, oh, these guys leave ordnance around everywhere. Uh-oh. Bill. Bill! OK, you bums. Ugh. I got one with a bent barrel. Okay, Ralph, go get him. I got this cut. Can you stop this thing? I'll never finish the reprogramming in time. Where's the master terminal? It's right there. Right here? Yes, that's it. Five, four, three, two. Did you make it? One. They're going, Bill. We're too late. The computer's designed to fire the missiles in sequence. The feed only went out on this one before you disarmed the system. Well, we take the one. You gotta stop it, Ralph! <sighs> Don't do me touch nothing! FBI Listen, Maxwell said he would do what he could. Ah, yeah. uh, he did not. Yeah. Yeah! Oh! 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 Bad case and no muffler, buddy. I've been watching you bust your drums for about three blocks. <laughs> okay, no problem. First of all, it's not my car. I'm just driving it. Federal business. Everything all right? Oh, sure. Everything's fine, right, pal? What's that? Gee, man, looks like a citation. I know what it is, Rodriguez. What's the matter with you? You crazy? Maybe you didn't get a good look at that badge. Suppose I get on to your captain about your annual eye examination. How would that be? Why don't you just do that? Make sure you get my badge number. I hate being ranked when all I'm doing is my job. I don't know how it feels to be ranked on our jurisdiction. Have a nice day. 
Hey, he's up, Maxwell. You know, I've been tagged a hundred times. It ain't the end of the world. Paco, no hook, please. And this comes to you from 101.9 on your dial from Palmdale. And a special dedication to Ralph. Just by way of saying thank you. From you know who. You know who.